Hey everyone, this is Dr. Medicine Alex, and in today's video, we'll be discussing about embryology of skin. Uh, please note that this is a very vast and complex topic. I have tried to limit the content of this video to what I feel is relevant and important, and all the sketches are of my own, and I've made them to uh, make this topic easily understandable. So please take them with a grain of salt. Now coming to the first topic that is gastrulation. So it is the complex process by which there is formation of the three germ layers, three embryonic germ layers that is the ectoderm, the mesoderm and the endoderm and this it begins during the third week of embryonic life. Coming to stages of development of skin, uh, it is uh, it has three important stages. First is a specification stage, the second is a morphogenesis stage and the third is a differentiation stage. Now specification stage it is uh, during the 0 to 60 days that is the first and the second month of the embryonic life and during this phase uh, the clump of cells that constitute the embryo they begin to commit to specified function uh, that is they begin to commit to form uh, epidermis and also the dermis. So the surface ectodermal cells they commit to forming the epidermis whereas the subsets of neural crest cells and the mesenchymal cells they commit to form the dermis. And during this period as well, there is a um, patterning of the future layers and specialized structures as well as uh, various cell to cell signaling pathways that are in uh, function in order to make this all happen. Then second is the morphogenesis phase and this is the uh, early fetal period and it is from the second to fifth month of embryonic life and during this phase the committed uh, tissues from the specification stage, uh, they further form their specialized structures. So, for example, such as the formation of the various layers of the epidermis or the epidermal appendages as well as division of the dermis into papillary and reticular dermis, formation of subcutes or vessels, this all is uh, that takes place during the morphogenesis phase and during the third phase that is the differentiation phase that is the fifth to ninth month, newly specialized tissues are formed, uh, these uh, newly specialized tissues that are formed, they further uh, become processed and to form their fully mature functional forms. Now coming to the uh, epidermis, so epidermis it is derived from surface ectodermal cells but there is more to ectodermal cells that we have to know. Uh, the thing is that these ectodermal cells they uh, they have the uh, role to form both the epidermis as well as the neural tube and this happens in the presence of various uh, molecular uh, proteins and pathways. So in the presence of the fibroblast growth factor, the ectodermal cells they form neuroectoderm and by a process called neurulation, this neuroectoderm it further forms a neural tube. Whereas if the FGF uh, protein is not active and it is inhibited in the presence of WNT signaling as well as bone morphogenic protein BMP, uh, there is formation of surface ectoderm. And these surface ectoderm cells, they differentiate into keratinocytes. Now these keratinocytes, they further have the function to form the hair follicles. So in the presence of WNT noggin, they form hair placode. And in the presence of the bone morphogenic protein BMP, they form the interfollicular epidermis, nothing but our skin. Now the cells in the dorsal portion of the neural crest, they become compacted to form neural crest cells. Uh, uh, sorry, in the presence of the, uh, on the dorsal portion of the neural tube, they become uh, compacted to form neural crest, which further forms various types of cells in the body as well as in the skin. Now coming to the specialized cells of the epidermis, this includes the melanocytes, the Langerhans cells and the Merkel cells. So melanocytes, they are derived predominantly from the neural crest cells, but they are also derived, uh, the cutaneous melanocytes they are also derived from Schwann cells, which are also known as the melanocyte precursor cells. Coming to the months and weeks of embryonic life that are important pertaining to melanocytes, the third month of uh, embryonic life is when uh, migration of the melanocytes happens, that is the twelfth week, and here they begin uh, their melanin synthesis, and by third and fourth month of embryonic life, they become detectable. And this detection, this identification is by HMB staining, uh, which can uh, be positive as soon as 50th day of embryonic life. Now by the fifth month, there is transfer of melanosomes, uh, that is a melanin pigment, uh, melanin pigment contained in the specialized organelles, that is a melanosome. So these melanosomes, they begin uh, transferring the melanin to keratinocytes by fifth month of embryonic life. Next coming to Langerhans cells. So these Langerhans cells, they are derived from the bone marrow, from the monocyte macrophage histiocyte cell line. 
and uh, they also complete their migration by 12th week like the melanocytes that is the third month and they express their cell surface markers such as the CD1A and Langerhans and also their Burbeck granules by about 13th week of embryonic life. Next, coming to the Merkel cells, these Merkel cells they are uh, derived from epidermal progenitors. Uh, earlier, it was thought to be derived from neural crest cells. Uh, some say they are derived from both neural crest as well as the epidermal progenitors, but now it is stated that they are derived from epidermal progenitors. and they are also detected by about 8th to 12th week of embryonic life and they are found in the basal layer of epidermis and they express cytokeratin 20 and neuropeptides and they have cytoplasmic dense core granules next coming to the dermis so this dermis it has a uh, a wide variety of uh, derivatives and also where it is derived from as well so this is a sketch that i have made the face on the anterior scalp the derm is on the face and the anterior scalp it is derived from the neural crest ectoderm whereas the derm is in the ventral body wall and the extremities it is derived from the lateral plate mesoderm whereas the derm is on the dorsal body wall it is derived from dermomyotome of embryonic somite so to avoid the confusion uh, this is something that i uh, found so the center ng is a neural tube groove and the circle beneath is the notochord and the one adjacent to it with the s in it is the somite and the lpm adjacent to the somite is the lateral plate mesoderm mesoderm so that is where the mesoderm uh, uh, dermis is derived so it is derived from the uh, dermomyotome of the embryonic somite from uh, to form the dorsal body wall whereas it is derived from the lateral plate mesoderm to form the ventral body wall and the extremities whereas it is derived from the neural crest ectoderm to form the anterior scalp and face coming to the weeks and the months that are important with respect to dermis so by the fourth week of embryonic life dermis uh, formation development uh, occurs and it is very cellular in the beginning and the collagen fibers they also become detectable at fourth week by 22 weeks of embryonic life elastic fibers develop and by 16 to 20 weeks of embryonic life this dermis it becomes distinguished to form papillary and the reticular dermis that is the um we can say somewhere in the fourth to fifth month that is also where we discussed uh, is a process of uh, morphogenesis and uh, uh, sorry is uh, morphogenesis and uh, differentiation and uh, the cells of the dermis which are the stellate cells mast cells phagocytes and melanoblasts they are derived during the 8th to 14th week of embryonic life whereas the other dermal cells such as the fibroblasts the perineural cells the pericytes and the merkel cells they are derived during the 14th to 22 week of embryonic life now coming to subcutaneous tissue this subcutaneous tissue it is derived from the mesenchymal cells and this happens during the 14th uh, week of embryonic life and the lipoblasts they initially uh, appear closer to the developing blood vessels and then these lipoblasts they develop further into lipocytes which then get divided by the uh, fibrous septa leading to the formation of the subcutaneous tissue next coming to the dermoepidermal junction uh, the embryonic dermoepidermal junction resembles uh, the mature uh, dermoepidermal junction with all the structures but the structures or they are completely formed by 12th week that is the third month and uh, as the development it progresses this uh, embryonic dj it acquires retinal ridges and dermal papillae like that of the adult dj next coming to the development of hair follicle so this is again a very uh, complex process there is going to be a to and fro between the dermis and the epidermis to form the hair follicle so first for the formation of follicle signals uh, are uh, given by the dermis to the overlying epidermis embryonic dermis to form certain photo focal thickenings called as the placodes so first there is formation of placodes which are nothing but epidermal focal thickenings and this uh, order is given by the underlying dermal cells now these epidermal placodes they further cause the underlying dermal cells to condense and form a presumptive dermal papilla so here in the first sketch the dermis is giving signal to the epidermis and the epidermis has formed focal thickenings which is what we call the dermal placodes 
and these dermal pockets have again instructed the underlying dermal cells to form a presumptive dermal papilla and this dermal papilla it again uh, directs the overlying keratinocytes of the plug coat to proliferate and extend deeper into the dermis. So here in the sketch we can see that the plug coat cells are proliferating into the dermis and this is something that happens by 12th to uh, 14th week of gestation and the superficial uh, this is what we call the head germ. So after dermal papilla the keratinocytes of the plug coat they proliferate to extend deeper into the dermis to form head germ and this head germ it by 12th to 14th week uh, surrounds the base of the hair follicle forms the base of the hair follicle it surrounds the dermal papilla to form hair peg and this hair peg has two bulges so the first bulge uh, on the posterior surface of the hair follicle so the first superficial bulge is what that forms a sebaceous gland and the lower bulge it becomes the insertion point for the future erector pylorum muscle and also become, becomes the head bulge region where uh, the uh, follicular stem cells are located and there's another bulge opposite to the two bulges on the anterior surface and it is a bit above the sebaceous gland and this bulge it forms the apocrine gland so there is first formation of plug coats which are epidermal thickenings as a result of signals from the dermis and this is followed by the condensation of the dermal cells to form the dermal papilla. This is followed by the formation of hair germ, which is nothing but the keratinocytes of the plug coat proliferating and extending deeper into the dermis. And this is followed by the formation of hair peg stage where the base of the hair follicle is surrounded by the dermal papilla. By second trimester, during the second trimester, by the end of the second trimester, the, all seven concentric layers of the hair are formed, hair follicle are formed and as well as the uh, hair canal it becomes fully developed and by 24 to 28 weeks the hair continues to grow now coming to the glands so the sebaceous glands they are formed as we discussed from the upper bud on the posterior wall of the hair peg and it becomes completely differentiated and functional by 13 to 15 weeks however the size decreases after birth and it uh, enlarges again because as we all know sebaceous glands are under the control of uh, androgens so again they become functional by puberty next coming to apocrine glands they develop from the lower bud on the posterior surface of the hair peg in the regions of the axilla and the groin and they become present in the neonate and again they become functional by puberty and then eccrine glands they start to develop at third month that is the 12th week of embryonic life and they first begin on the palms and soles and on fifth month by fifth month they are seen all over the body and uh, they arise from the germinative layer and there's more to the development of these eccrine glands that is uh, the lumen is formed between the fourth to eighth month and during the eighth month again this lumen broadens and by ninth month the myoepithelial cells become recognizable and by 36 weeks uh, sweating to emotional stimuli starts and full term maturity of eccrine glands is achieved postnatally now coming to the development of nails so nail development it starts by 8th to 10th week of embryonic life and it is completed by the 5th month. So it begins as a flat rectangular surface of the nail bed on dorsal digital tips. And this nail bed it uh, as soon as it forms it gets uh, surrounded it gets well demarcated by nail folds. And the dorsal nail fold is a um, and these are the first structures to keratinize essentially and the proximal border of the nail fold uh, it extends deep into the dermis to form the uh, nail matrix primordium which contains the nail stem cells which further forms the nail plate and uh, a nail plate then emerges from under the proximal nail fold by fourth month and by fifth month the nail plate it uh, covers the entire nail bed and the process is complete and the nails develop um, by similar process but they are always the two nails they develop uh, by a similar process but they are uh, four weeks behind than the fingernails thank you subscribe for more